Hey, what's going on guys? Aaron Cloud with Keller Williams Premier Properties Group for another episode of Let's Talk About Real Estate Tuesday because I love talking about real estate. And if you live in Dallas, Texas, I assume you love tacos. So a little bit of change of scenery today, working out of our Rockwall office. So we're down here, right on the square in Rockwall. Fantastic space. It used to actually be a bank, so that's kind of a cool history fact and cool decor. We'll put some pictures and stuff up. But what I want to talk about today is we've given a lot of love to the buy side of the transaction and talking a lot about what goes into actually purchasing a house. But a big side of that transaction is obviously the other side, which is the seller side of things. And so in a really competitive market right now, sellers have a have an upper hand on things. But what I wanted to talk about was um, seller concessions and what those are, seller credits, what those look like and some different scenarios where that may come into play if you are selling your home. Number one, um, it is kind of a bargaining chip. Let's say that you guys go under contract, um, have the normal inspection, things come back, and there's a few things that are recommended that need to be fixed. Uh, moving out of the house, sometimes people don't necessarily want to put money back into the home to have big things fixed there. Um, sometimes people don't want to deal with ha the hassle of dealing with contractors, things like that. So what a possibility is for the seller is to essentially give a seller's credit to the buyers. What this is, is not you coming out of pocket necessarily having to write a check, but essentially taking or giving a credit for an agreed upon amount so that let's say that you need to do something with the HVAC, instead of paying $2,000 to get it replaced or get it worked on or anything like that, you give a $2,000 credit um, so that essentially that money is taken off the total sales price. You net less, you take home less at the end of the transaction, but it appeases and, and, and that, that buyer saves some money so that they can actually do those repairs themselves with someone they trust in their own time frame, things like that. Another scenario is, um, let's say that someone's, a seller has been in their home for a really long time. Um, they decided that they wanted to personalize their bathroom and painted a lovely shade of seafoam green, or there's an older house that has maybe some shag carpet, or I've seen red maroon carpet, things or wall, wood paneling on the walls, things like that. Things that are just a little bit dated, uh, maybe not up with the times or the trends there. What you're able to do to entice buyers to still come look at the home is actually offer a credit, the same, uh, same principle applies, but advertise it up front that instead of you going through and replacing the carpet, at closing, they're actually gonna credit. So once they move in, they'll have a little bit extra cash left over. They can actually go through and um, go through and check out um, or make it, make it work on their part. So a couple different ways that you can use that as a negotiating tool. Um, you can't always go through if you're a seller and go through and actually pay for it and have the things done. I just know sometimes people, especially when you're working against the gun, don't necessarily have time or want to deal with contractors. So a couple different ways you can use seller credits to help those buyers out, but also to make sure that you get the deal done and incentivize them to move forward. So, um, now out in Rockwall today, trying a new place, um, that was super popping at lunch time. Um, Taqueria, I think it was T O Con. Um, I may be pronouncing that wrong and may have left something off there, but uh, went with, again, barbacoa and lingua, two of my favorite tacos. It was popping, like I had to wait in line and wait, um, but I have a feeling it's gonna be well worth it. Give me salsa in a bag, so this is some OG stuff, you know that it's gonna be good. So I'm gonna start off with, uh, I'm gonna bite into this. Start off with the barbacoa. Oh, oh. So snag a quick bite from this one, check it out. So the barbacoa was really good. Last week, set the bar really high. A little bit greasy, but really, really good. Good flavor, good sized tacos. Still a solid choice there. Um, and now going to go to probably my favorite and the one that my wife hates um, is lingua. And so if you don't know what that is, look it up. For all the taco aficionados, you know what I'm talking about. I'm gonna assume that you love it too. And then, oh, this one's falling apart on me. All right, Lingua is definitely one of the better ones I've had in a while. Um, super soft, not super overpowering with the taste. Um, but really, really stinking good. Really glad I tried this place out. So I appreciate you tuning in. Um, if there's anything that we can do, myself or my team, to help you look into buy, sent, buy, sell, rent, invest in residential real estate here in the DFW Metroplex, please reach out to us. Uh, until next time, thanks guys.